When GWM, Great Wall Motors, offered me the chance to take home one of their vehicles for a couple of days to do a long-term test on it, I had no idea of three things. One, that this vehicle would have seen me end up in places that I've never been in Trinidad before. Number two, the fact that Trinidad Tobago doesn't seem to be making much progress in terms of the infrastructure needed for electric vehicles. And finally, number three, the fact that electric vehicles were a well-kept secret until this video. It's a case of who have it know and who do have it don't know. But first, before all of that, we had to do the paperwork. So after doing all the relevant vehicle checks and the paperwork, so began day one of driving the GWM Aura 3. When I got it, it had a remaining range of 391 kilometers. Now the dealership is located up El Sicuro. So I had to make my way from El Sicuro down west where my base of operations would be for the next couple of days. On the way down, I stopped for snacks at Peak's gas station. This is me walking back to the vehicle here. And then from there, I went home, which is further into Dago Martin. When I got home, I had a remaining range of 366 kilometers. I drove 21.2 kilometers from the dealership to Peak's gas station to home, which means I used up 25 kilometers of range to travel 21.2 kilometers, a difference of 3.8 kilometers. Now I can attribute that missing kilometers there to the fact that it's very difficult to drive an electric car economically. Even though that's what it's supposed to be for, that instant torque you always want to pull off at a traffic light instantly. It's like boom, you're there and you're gone. And then on top of that, I left the vehicle locked but on while I went into peaks because they gave me a vehicle with no tint. So I didn't want to have to go through the whole recooling down of the vehicle again. So I left the AC on, left the car on but locked and I went into the gas station. I then later left home again to go and use the ATM by the Forest gas station which is why the vehicle is parked up here. Again, on but locked. So all of that is using up some fuel economy. Later on that night, I left home, went over Moncoco into Maraval, went into Helen Park to show off the vehicle to someone. So I was showing off the vehicle there, that's the vehicle parked up there. Left Helen Park, went into Mocha, left Mocha, passed through Maraval, went into Cascade, left Cascade, went around the Savannah, and made my way back to Diego Martin. That was a total of 39.8 kilometers, Diego Martin, Maraval, Halen Park, Mocha, Cascade, and back to Diego Martin. So at the end of this night, when you added in the 21 point something kilometers from earlier on in the day, I ended the day with 69% battery left and 289 kilometers of range. Now that is the 61 total kilometers plus 15 kilometers. And that plus 15 kilometers is miscellaneous. That's when I left home to go by the ATM, went by True Value, it wasn't working, went by Scotiabank, Starlight, too much people, ended up by the gas station, by Foros, and then back home. So that's why it's 61 kilometers plus 15 miscellaneous. Now if you're good at math, you'll be saying to yourself, well, you're supposed to have about 315 kilometers of range left. But you only have 289. So where is the missing kilometers? You're missing 26 kilometers still. I am going to chalk up those missing 26 kilometers to the fact that that vehicle was left on for about two and a half hours up Hill and Park, Mocha, and even back home when I was just in the menu digging up in certain things. So all of that is going to use up some battery percentage. And on top of that, at every acceleration point I got, I made sure I accelerated the vehicle. You cannot just drive an electric vehicle and not test out the acceleration. So that missing 26 kilometers was because of my driving and the fact that I didn't take it off, which is a theme of this entire video, most times. But this is where I ran into my first small issue. In my haste to get the keys to the vehicle, I did not inquire about where to charge it. It came with a charger you can plug into a wall outlet at home and into the vehicle. So I assumed I would just be able to plug it into any wall outlet and charge it. Unfortunately, when I did so, I got a fault. And that's because the current I have home isn't showing enough for some technical reason. So there I was sitting in the car, 69% battery left. And I'm wondering, 289 kilometers on a gas vehicle, that wouldn't concern me. Because there's a gas station around every corner. So I could go anywhere and back, no problem. But this is an electric vehicle, there aren't much charging stations. In fact, where the hell are these charging stations? So I started to Google, and the two closest ones were Hilton and Jenny's on the Boulevard. I called Hilton, couldn't get through. I called Jenny's on the Boulevard, and I was told once you are dining in or you're a customer, you can get a charge. And that is so convenient, that is foresight. Because you see these three spots here? Jenny's on the Boulevard's owner or co-owner or whoever is in charge there decided to convert those three spots there to electric charging station so while you are dining you are actually getting back the range in the battery that you would have used up to get there in the first place and if you stayed long enough and then some so your entire transit technically was free but 
that was for another day. At this point, I was really tired and sleepy, so I decided let's end day one and pick it up tomorrow, which should have been the Saturday. Day number two of three, first order of business, go to Jennings in the Boulevard and test out their charger. We ended last night at 69%, left Diego Martin, pulled up at Jennings in the Boulevard, pulled into one of the charging bays, which is also the car park, ordered something, a guy came out, asked which car it was, the only car there actually, plugged it in, and the charging began. Left home at 69%, got here at 65%. Now it's saying 3 hours and 25 minutes to fully charge. And that's because this isn't a fast charger. It is what is known as a trickle charger, which is recommended because it preserves the battery life. Fast charging is if you're in a pinch. Most times, this is the type of charger I will use. This is what I would have been doing if my charger worked at home, but it didn't. So I sat down. The meal didn't take long to come. It came. I sat down and I ate. I even ended up in a conversation with one of the owners of Jennings Honey Boulevard. We talked for a few minutes and after that, it was time to head out. I got there at 65% and I'm leaving at 78% after just about an hour with 317 kilometers of range. Next order of business, St. Augustine Medical because obviously I have to let Doc see the car. So I went to St. Augustine Medical. Here I am parked up in the car park waiting for Doc to come downstairs. He eventually came. We spoke about the car for a few minutes. From there, up Mount St. Benedict. Now, I never went up Mount St. Benedict before. Everybody says it's a steep hill, it this, it that. When I saw the hill, I was like, what part of this hill is steep? If I knew this hill was like this, I would have gone up Paramount instead. But everybody wanted to know, how does the Aura Tree go up there being a small car that's electric? Now, I had no concerns. Because even though it looks small on the outside, it does have more than enough power. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn the audio on, and at certain points, you're going to hear the wheels skidding because I accidentally went too far down on the accelerator pedal. Driving an electric car like the Aura 3 takes some getting used to because you are accustomed to a gasoline vehicle where the torque has to build. This one, the torque is just there instantly. It sometimes catches you off guard. But anyway, finally reached up this shallow hill, took some pictures, and answered a few questions from the public. Huh? Yes, a beige and brown, with white and brown on the inside. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay. The oratory falls into two distinct categories. The men find it ugly, the women can't get enough of it. They just love it. Every aspect of it, they just love. But anyway, from there, I made my way up east. I had to park up here to wait for somebody for over an hour. I hope you see this video. But if it was a gasoline vehicle, you would have been idling and burning gas. But in an electric vehicle, you're not burning gas, but you're using power from the battery. Meanwhile, I'm parked up there, and everybody's just looking in the vehicle. What kind of car is that, boy? They're curious. And I'm in this clear fishbowl. No tint. Not even tint treatment, nothing. Just clear glass. Eventually left there and made my way up to East Lake. Here I am parked up. From East Lake, it was time to go to Presal gas station because I've been hearing that Presal gas station has a fast charger. So I was interested to see how this fast charger worked. So I made my way up to Presal gas station. As you know, you have to go head south and then turn around and go over over pass and then come back and you reach the gas station eventually. So here I am at the gas station and there it is, the fast charger. Now there are three nozzles. The middle and the extreme right are the fast chargers and the extreme left is the trickle charger. One is missing obviously because the vehicle was already charging when I took this picture. At not 5:10 a.m. but 5:10 p.m. and it went up to 41 more minutes. It was about a minute time. Now the thing with that fast charger is like a cell phone charger. You have a fast charger from zero to about 60 percent. It just rams the power into the battery and then after 60 percent, it starts to slow down and trickle. So from the 41 percent, well 40, 41 percent about 65 70 percent that was like about 20 30 minutes max it just like rammed the power into that when it reached about 75 percent is when it started to drag and drag and drag but remember these vehicles are made to charge at your home or maybe your place of employment these charges are just there in case you need a quick boost you only move you want to go from 40 to 60 percent you pop in quick you leave this was the final charge i got 
93%, the duration 1 hour and 7 minutes, the date on top there, 40.18 kilowatts and the price 84.38 dollars so this price is wrong i am hearing that there's something in law that says only tn tech can legally sell current well for now until they change the law so i actually paid nothing for charging this vehicle well i did buy three cheese by in a minute made from the quick shop but other than that i spent nothing to charge this vehicle and also if you were to charge this vehicle home with residential rates from 10 percent that's a hundred percent still wouldn't be $84. It'll be a little bit less than $84. So you can see the economics is already working out. From there, I made my way back to East Lake in Arima and then back to the West in Dago Martin. Total, 205.8 kilometers traveled. It took, well, according to this, nine hours and 42 minutes, but it's close to five hours because I've been mean, parked up there and this app was still running. So it's about five hours of driving and here's to just idling. At this point, I said to myself, tomorrow, not that I don't have any range anxiety, I've been going further and further out. I want to see how far I can go. So I'm not doing any more driving for today, which would have been Saturday. And then I got home and a friend of mine was like, eh, let me see the car now, boy. So I was like, well, okay. So I left home again. Hey, what the f Is that okay at all? So after about 45 minutes of acceleration tests in sport, eco, normal, and then showing them how the lane keeper assisters work and adaptive screws control and all the other safety tech and other features, it was time to head home and I headed home to go and rest because tomorrow I was going to see how far I can push it, do or die. At this point in time, I literally had a tow truck on speed dial just in case because I wanted to see how far I can go. And here we are, the final day and the big day. The day I'm going to see how far can the GWM Aura 3 take me. But first, I needed to get a full charge. Now again, I have to always stress, if I got my home charger to work, I would have been able to charge the vehicle at home and not have to go back by Prisal gas station. Because my house isn't wired for it, I had to go to the gas station. So here I am, going to the gas station. I pulled over here to check some directions. I'm telling you all, Driving an electric vehicle is so addictive. I'm going to merge from the shoulder onto the highway so effortlessly. Normally with a normal vehicle, you have to wonder, can you get up to speed in time? No time. You just, once you hit the accelerator pedal, you only move again. I fell in love with the GWM Oratory. I love this electric power. But I'm on my way to get the vehicle charged again to 100%. And this right here, this is driving. You have your lane keeper assist keeping you in lane. You have your adaptive cruise control slowing down whenever the vehicle in front slows down. It's effortless driving. On top of that, electric power. It's silent, no vibration. You are literally just waffling over the road. It's like, why all vehicles couldn't be like this? So cruise control is currently set to 100 kilometers an hour and there's nothing for a good distance up ahead. So we are maintaining that 100 kilometers. But if something were to pull in front of us, or well, let's say we close the gap to the cars to the front, well at the front, what will happen is that, okay, it's slowing down now because it's realizing the vehicles in front are slowing down. So it's down to 93, 95 is going back up now, 97, you can feel the vehicle hold them back. My hands aren't on the steering wheel right now because it could keep itself in lane. As you can see there, it's keeping itself in lane. But my hand is closed in case something were to pop off. So that truck in front there is moving extremely slowly. Obviously, it's a truck, so we're down to 75 kilometers an hour and now. And the thing about it is, even though the Aura 3 isn't a self-driving vehicle, it's not rated to be a self-driving vehicle, that adaptive cruise control paired with that excellent lane keeper assist, it makes the vehicle mimic a self-driving vehicle in certain circumstances. It will keep you in lane so precise. It doesn't jar and pull the steering wheel left and right and make people behind you think that you're drunk. It just gently pulls you back into lane and keeps the car there. It's one of the best. I once said the Nissan Note has one of the best lane keeper assists. This one is right up there as well. And added to that, it may look like a small car on the outside, like a Swift or a Note or an Aqua, but given the fact that it's an all-electric vehicle and electric batteries are right now very heavy, it plants itself to the road. All electric vehicles have this trait, whereby because they are so heavy, even though they are small, they normally just sit down on the road like a bigger vehicle. So you might think to yourself, wow, it's a small vehicle, it's probably bumping all over the place. 
but actually no it just sits down there and you are driving as you just waffle over the road and approaching the gas station now almost killed off the road here i'll make a separate video about that i had to pull outside to comprehend what just took place apparently somebody threw diesel or oil or something around the roundabout yeah it was a whole mess but more on that later on i'm pulling up to the gas station here about to get charged to 100 percent pull up to the thing what is this a pump a dispenser i don't even know what to call it the plug i pull up to the plug call the security he came across swipe his card which one you want the fast charger or the other one obviously the fast charger bro come on we have only here yeah. so he plugged in the fast charger and i waited there. i was determined to not leave until i had 100 percent battery charge and i got it yeah yeah every time i got out to check something somebody walked up to me what type of car is it how much to charge it how far can you go Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody no, I, want, I want to buy electric vehicle. Yeah. yeah, so the, you get the current from there, and the current going in. We just see a plug in there. We are plugging that thing. Yeah. So it just plug in, and that's it. Is it making now? Yeah, that's, that's where it reached now. Huh? That's where it reached now. Yeah. yeah. So. That's what I think, nice boy. Yeah, everything. Nice person after person after person after person and i'm just trying to eat my pastries and charge a vehicle but anyway i understand it's not something i see every single day yet hopefully so everybody had questions but back to the charging okay so i'm at 100 percent 420 kilometers in range finished charging so let's unplug it now so I hit the stop button and that was the read out there. 78 minutes or just over an hour, 100% charge. And look at the price again, 80 something dollars. Again, I'm gonna say this price is wrong. If you are charging the vehicle at home, it's gonna be a bit less than this. I would say probably $40, maybe $50 to a full charge. But enough about that, back on the road. Now I am not from the Southland, so I don't know where I was at this point in time in the video. All I know, I am heading further and further, deeper and deeper into south. So if you know what area this was, point it out in the comments for me, I would like to know. But right now, I can't remember exactly what area this was. I was following directions at that point in time. Looking back at it, I think this is point 14. I think somewhere in here was point 14. Now remember I told you all, I don't drive economically at all. I was not actually trying to conserve battery power. I was just driving a vehicle. I remember I also said that I accelerated every chance I got and that I also don't drive an eco, it was sport mode right through. Well, I saw an empty stretch of roadway and I couldn't resist. You never get used to that acceleration. It's just something you just never get used to. But eventually, I made my way to Clifton Hill, which is somewhere in South, I'm guessing. But I wanted more. Clifton Hill wasn't far enough. At this point, I'm like, hmm. I need more. So back on the road I went. Went onto a road that led to a next road, that led to a next road, that led to even more road. I am so far in south that if something were to happen, it will be faster to get back to Dago Martin by boat than to drive back to Dago Martin. But anyway, eventually I ended up in this area here, coconut trees as far as the eye could see. And this road really isn't smooth. It's slightly bumpy, slightly smooth. So it really gives the suspension a good test. And I can tell you all, the car drove well even on this bad road. Let's look on the footage. Let's see, now the road, this is actually a good part here. Lower down was more bumpy. But even here, really isn't good. You wouldn't consider this to be good road. If you had a pickup, you could probably go through here doing 80, no problem. But in a car, you wouldn't really think that. It's going through here normal. It's going through here. You're feeling the bumps, obviously. It's not air suspension. It's not air ride. But given the fact that the vehicle is so heavy and planted, you are able to go here just normal just watch the front of the vehicle and gauge the bump based on that so we reached to the end well what i thought to be the end because the person on the gps said you have arrived at your destination but i'm seeing more road so i'm like okay this isn't the point i put here but let's see where the road goes now silly me seeing everybody turning to the right decided i'm gonna go straight it was a dead end so obviously i had to turn around to go where i was supposed to go in the first place now at this point 
range anxiety has gone totally out of the window. I have already confirmed that nowhere in Trinidad is too far for this car to go. So I'm not even watching at the battery percentage anymore. I am just driving and enjoying the drive. Now remember I told you all the car handles the bumps really well. Well, there's a bit of a scary moment here. It was scary for me because I understand that the batteries for these vehicles are below it. So you don't really want to go scraping the bottom all over the place. You don't want to puncture a battery. I don't know how under there is sealed up. I don't want to find out. So I was looking at this bridge and I was like, should I turn back here? But then I was like, no, I'm going to go over. The bottom didn't touch. It didn't bottom out. I was able to ease my way up as you can see here. But the bumps were more severe than normal and you can see how the car is handling those undulations it's rocking from side to side it wasn't jarring it was just scary because i didn't want the bottom to touch but after that i was back on the road and i'm now wondering how far is the end of trinidad like trinidad is clearly bigger than i thought because what even is all this at this point i have lost all sense of direction i don't know where east is north south nothing i'm just following the road eventually i look down here and I saw like the beach, like okay, he turned back, I'm gonna go down. We had to wait for the mayor to cross the road. He didn't wanna cross. Because clearly he paid more tax than I, so I had to wait on him. And then I didn't know if he was in front of the car or not, so it's like, dog, are you still there? I don't wanna bong say no. I don't know nobody down here. What if I come and get my ass beat? But anyway, eventually he moved and I was able to make my way closer to the beach that I saw. But what I assumed was a beach was just water. But at this point, anything to the end would have done. And I started seeing the pitch ending and i'm seeing sand so i'm like okay i'm getting closer then i saw this tree here and i'm like did i end up in south africa what if it, what, is, what even is this tree but i started to make my way closer and closer in i started seeing more and more boats appearing out in the distance and i'm saying to myself it must be nice just having boats in your backyard like boats giving away down here look at just boats no engines though but boats I saw a little gap here, I made my way through this gap, being very careful not to spin up the front tires and get stuck in the sand, and eventually, there it was, the end of Trinidad. Out in the distance, you can legit see Venezuela, because Venezuela was right there. This is like the furthest south I've ever gone. I took some quick videos, took some quick pictures, and then it was back on the road, because we're not here for all our sightseeing thing. So after leaving Presal Gas Station with 412 kilometers of range, going into Gulf City Mall, waiting there for a while, going through Point Fourteen, and finally making my way up to Icacos, I was leaving Icacos with 74% battery left and 318 kilometers of range. Remember, we started with 420, driving a total distance of 96.7 kilometers to Icacos, which means there's a difference of 5.3 kilometers in range unaccounted for. And again, you can chug that up to parking up in Gulf City Mall for about 45 minutes just in AC. Then I eventually went into McDonald's, then parking up by Clifton Hill, taking pictures and videos. The car was still on here, AC was on because remember, no tint. Parking up here to take pictures and videos, whatever you call this place. There's a bunch of ducks and a swamp and stuff around here. And then finally reaching the carcass and stopping to take pictures and videos and stuff for a short time before it was back on the road. So to only lose 5.3 kilometers, that was pretty good. And the more I drove this car, the madder I got. And this is why. When I finally got back from the carcass, stopped at Gold City and then back to Dago Martin, I had 37% battery remaining with 153 kilometers of range. Now, with that 153 kilometers, I could have probably gone from Dago Martin to Arima and back, Dago Martin to San Fernando and back, Dago Martin to Port Spain and back like about 15 times. In total, for the day, I would have driven 295.2 kilometers. Just 5 kilometers short of making the 300 kilometer mark. And I could have done all that charging this vehicle home for about 50, 60, 80 dollars. And remember, I was not in eco mode for the majority of that drive. I was in sport mode constantly. So I'm saying to myself, why am I still having to go and spend 200 dollars to get that same range in a vehicle? Maybe 160, 180 in a hybrid vehicle. Why? Electric vehicles has to be one of the most well-kept secret for the elites right now in Trent Tobago. Because if people can afford them, or the early adopters are out here saving on gas bill and passing us every single day and laughing because we are saying it have no engine, it's not going vroom vroom, I want my car to go vroom vroom. Meanwhile, they paying $40 to fill their battery and we paying $280, 260 3 something and up. The more I drove the aura, the more I loved it and the mad I got at the same time. You see the electric vehicle is like a crux. You look at it, uh, it's ugly, I don't like it, ew. 
And then one day, make a mistake and put it on your foot. And you fell in love. It's like, wow, this thing comfortable, boy. Cool, it light. It nice. And then from that day onwards, nobody can buy more Crocs than you. It's the exact same thing. You buy a totally electric vehicle. It ugly. It have bug eyes. It's an electric car. It have no engine. And then they get to drive one for an extended period. And it's like, hmm. 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 And I can't lie. Day one, day two, there was some range anxiety. There was the looking at the battery bar like 80%, 79%, 70% and wondering, would I make it? Would I shut down? But then you quickly realize that when they make these vehicles and they test it and they give it a mileage rating, they don't do it to make Caribbean countries happy. They do it to make countries that are far bigger than us happy. Whereby in some countries you are driving for 400 kilometers and you are still in the same city. 400 kilometers down here is like from one point to the other point of Trinidad twice. And how many times do you do that? The average person to work and back, church and back, to a fet and back. And given the fact that these vehicles are built to be able to charge home overnight, you drive into your garage, you charge it home, and you drive the next day wherever you have to go. Range really isn't a problem in a small country like Trinidad and Tobago. And given the fact that we are a manufacturing nation, so is power. Because we have cheap electricity. Even with the increased rates, we still have cheap electricity. Whereby a vehicle like this is going to cost a fraction of the cost to fill a vehicle to go the exact same mileage. Which is why it's so infuriating to me that we don't have more infrastructure for electric vehicles. Whereby Jenny's on the boulevard could see it fit to be forward thinking enough to have a charging station for their customers. Hilton have it because Porsche brought it. After that, it's spaced out 1111. It's so unfortunate that we actually have more CNG stations or more CNG pumps than electric pumps. And CNG is an obsolete technology. It's an obsolete technology for the masses. There is an application for it. And there are people who will go down tooth and nail saying how much money they're saving putting a big stripper looking tank in the trunk. But it's not the future. It's the past. And sadly, only few see it. And if you that see it so far are out here charging their vehicles for 30 and 45 dollars to get the same range that you are spending 280 dollars and 380 dollars to get let that sink in